Good afternoon peeps, Monday and over the weekend I had a double chat with uh, John Burke, the guru of all things Holbrook and he made a suggestion which whilst I was resistant to it I have to admit he's absolutely right. This lathe is very, very heavy and very awkward to move. When it was disassembled, i.e. it was just the, uh, the tray is cast as one piece with the bed. Just the tray and the bed, this hydraulic platform will lift it. Right? So I could lift the bed up, put the legs on, right? Got it all painted and then started reassembling it. Now it's reassembled, that hydraulic platform will hardly shift it off the ground. Right? I can just about pull the lever hard enough to get it to lift it. And what is this rated at? It's 448 pounds at 14 inches yes so it's very heavy so what he suggested and what he's done on his lathes is to put a piece of box section under the feet a piece of 100 by 50 under the feet and bolt the lathe through so that it's effectively on two skids Right, and then you can put rollers under those skids and you can move the lathe about on rollers, which makes perfect sense. Right, but it's rather scuppered, well it hasn't rather scuppered, and it has rather scuppered my idea of using round tube. And the second thing he said is that others have used round tube and it doesn't look right. Well, now I look at these pictures again. You can see here that this is square, right, well, I'm not too bothered about that, but there's another problem. There is another problem, and that is the fact that in my head, the two pillars would be here, but in actual reality, one pillar's in line with that, on the outside of the legs and the other pillars in line with this on the inside of the legs so my tube between the legs is only going to be able to take one of the two uh, uprights to support it I'll show you what I mean anyway because I've ordered the I've ordered all the fittings now I've spent 60 quid on the fittings now so there you go, that's maybe 60 quid up the, up the spout, but never mind. Uh, but I do have to admit he's right. Now, when I got this lathe, that was attached to there. And hanging on those two bolts was all the counter shaft and the electric motor and the frame that was around it. It was all hung on there. But they'd cut away the body here so that the bolt could drive downwards. Well, I didn't like that at all, so I put that back. So also what I've got to look at is that this, the counter shaft pulley has to stand out over here, right? It can't be right back there because of the angle of the drive and the position of the back gear. So it angles over a certain amount, but the, if you can think of a line up here, the counter shaft pulley has to stand out that way to be more over this pulley and the second thing he's explained to me which Andrew Morrison also picked up on straight away and I and I didn't 
is the fact that this pulley does not need to slide. What happens on the original fitting uh, is something that I'd looked at and looked at and looked at and, and just misseen and misread what it did. Basically, these pulleys, these two pulleys are opposite each other. So you've got one, two, three different speeds. But on the motor, with the drive from the motor, you have another two speeds. Which means you have a high and a low on the motor. That gives you six speeds. So you have three speeds in high, three speeds in low on the motor, and then you've got another six speeds by using the back gear. That's how you get the 12 speeds. You don't need to, you don't need to slide that pulley along the shaft at all. So there's another couple. Now, I have found that that's the main motor drive pulley. I've got that one. Or I've got this one. And that one is very, very close to being half the size of that one. So that might be a pulley to stick in the lathe, turn out to inch and a quarter, and affix to the shaft. Right, so that could solve that problem. Here's the motor. I've probably got another pulley that I can put alongside that one. Or we can arrange for the motor to slip to shift slightly sideways to accommodate the uh, different position in the V-belt. But that's that's doable. A plenty shaft on the motor, I could put another I could put another move that pulley along, I could put another pulley on the outside of it. Uh, I'd like to put one on the same size. I've probably got something approaching that size but I'm not sure. So it's been a weekend of revelations. And the first thing I did was started looking for box section. What I've got, what box section I've got. Well, if I had two pieces of that, I'd be quidzing. Only trouble is I've only got one. This is the tube I was going to use, which is very similar size. In fact, it's virtually identical size. But that's the tube I was going to use. I've also got loads of short lengths of this. So I'm going to wait till the fittings arrive, which should be tomorrow. And then I'm going to decide what to do. But the first thing I have to solve is the problem that one of the legs is actually on the outside of these legs here, well, at the back. Right? It's not on the, they're not both on the inside like I thought they were. I think I've just, I've designed this too much in my head and not enough by looking at pictures of the lathe. But of course, you see, I never had any anything to do with this. It wasn't set up like that when I got it. Right. Right. So you're up to date. You're up to date. So what I need is two pieces of 100 by 50 by 4 box section, 4 mil box section. That's about 4 foot long. And that's quite expensive, but never mind, because I might be able to get it from the scrapyard. So I've now got an excuse to go to the scrapyard and take some cable in, because I've got quite a few bags of scrap wire to go in. So I can take them and see if he's got any box section. I mean, the box section is available. Uh, but it's a good idea. I know what he means there. such a heavy thing when it comes to it. And the only other alternative is to decide on somewhere to put it and set it up in position and then assemble it in position. Now, I'm thinking the best place for it might be there where these uh, where those shelves are next to that lid uh, or here by moving these machines here. These machines here, the shaper I use rarely, but it's, you know, it's when I use it, it's, it usually does a job that nothing else would do. The drilling machine I use all the time, right? But that can go anywhere next to a three-phase socket. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm going to have to have a long, hard think about it. And I can't do much today because the pipe fittings haven't come. Tomorrow is Isabel's graduation ceremony. So I will be at that probably all day. So there will be no Tuesday. So I'll crack on and uh, I'll film a bit more today and then I'll see you on Wednesday. So bye for now but there may be some more film for Monday. It's a glorious day. It's almost too hot outside. Glorious, glorious weather. Look at that. Still Monday. And I found a load of box section. I knew I had it. Right? I knew it was there. But I didn't think it was the right size and it is. So. All I'll probably need to buy. Is the two pieces from under there. Which is not out of the way. Uh, and I think I'm going to go down that route. But I've had a rake about and I've found some loads of bits of box section. Uh, so I can do it. I can do it. I, yeah. I think I've worked this out. Uh, I think I've worked out how to do the fact that the outer leg is stepped beyond the, beyond the leg of the lathe. I can do that as well. So... It's all beginning to gel again in my head. Right, I have another job to do today. I've got to modify this pallet by taking that off, putting it there, and making a small pallet to put that motor on so that it can be sent off to Shropshire. So, that's the next job. Let's get on with it. I'll bring you back when I'm on. There she is folks, palleted up, bolted down to the pallet with, uh, I put those on, they're a bit rough but they'll just protect the shafts uh, from being bent, they'll, they'll do it, right, so I've got to wait now and see how much it is and then pull the thing and bag it down and uh, it'll be water tight, right, job done, and there she is folks, all bagged up and ready for dispatch. Exactly the same as me. Because it's home time and I'm going. See you all on Wednesday. Bye now. Morning folks. Wednesday. Somewhere in there is a tractor. Where you left it? Where I left it. Somewhere. Among all this. Oh, there it is. I see a bit of blue. Right, let's see if we can get it going. So folks, Uncle Keith started making some uh, video and of course, wouldn't you know it, the bloody battery went out. So, as you can see, Tactor is back up there and we have a huge clear area. A huge cut area. Looks wonderful. And I don't think we managed to mash any of wildlife at all. And we've done over there. But here we've gone into new territory. We've been in between trees and we've cut right up to the boundary just here.
in this corner. Oh, it smells good. I can't. Oh, it smells gorgeous, absolutely. Unfortunately, we had two accidents. The first accident was one of these low branches on these trees managed to swipe the exhaust off the tractor but what it's done is it's the pipe stayed in the manifold and the actual silencer just sheared off it because it was rusty anyway so that was good it's not done any damage to the tractor so it's a quick welding job this is our boundary here these big trees form our boundary and the problem is with this piece of land just beyond where we've cut up to there it goes downhill quite steeply and we're a little bit nervous about going down there with the tractor but as you can see this is a, a huge area that we've cleared behind these trees here and uh, you know, there's a there's an animal hole they're going to get a shock when they come up tonight I've got to get that bloody wildlife camera set up among all the other jobs I've got to do So we've cut right down to there. This is the ridge here. And this is where it starts to go downhill quite steeply. So I haven't got the bottle to go down there with the tractor, it's just too dangerous. So we've cut right along this edge, all this lot. And over here as well. Unfortunately, the second accident was when a tree swiped my hat off, and I'm afraid my hat took a little damage as the cutter went over it. Never mind. And there we have another square cut. There's another ridge here. I don't know what these ridges are, they've been here, they're dead straight, they're very neat, they're sort of triangular with a flat top, there's one up there, there's one along this edge, right, and they appear to have maybe had fences on top of them to keep cattle in, or whatever, but who knows, but there we are, a huge area cut, it's really good, and there's Uncle Keith also taking some pictures. Right, that's Wednesday done. I'll see you all tomorrow. That's our oak tree. That was supposed to be scrub oak. It was supposed to grow as a scrub oak and not, not shoot up in the air like that. But there it is. It's good soil. You know they say that the uh, there's a story about old men who plant trees that they'll never sit in the shade of. Well, we've planted loads of trees and we've sat in the shade of them all. They grow like mad on this land. They really do. Bye now. Morning folks, Thursday. Or should I say afternoon folks, Thursday. The downpour <coughs> of this morning has ceased. The weather's cleared and it's looking very nice. My bags of firewood got wet unfortunately, but they'll dry out. What I've just been doing I'm going to mend this, repair this exhaust in a minute, but what I've just been doing is just sorting out roughly whereabouts this uh, frame is going to be. I've got some steel, they're cutting it for me today. So I've got some steel locally, which I could have got the steel anywhere, but the delivery charges just ruin the price, so I've got some locally. And they're cutting it for me today, and that'll be ready probably tomorrow or even this afternoon. Uh, to go under there. What I'm then going to do, I'll just take you around here, hand held and feeling sick. Is another piece of box section, not a full length like this, but another piece of box section with two uprights from there, one there, and one about there. Right, and then there will be a a couple of I can't put that down, it'll slide. There'll be a couple of uh, just 
reinforcing pieces into the T-slot just to hold it at give it some extra strength and rigidity there right and then uh, I'll be able to see then where I can position the motor and how I'm going to orientate the pulley but until I get the steel underneath it and bolted on I really can't start doing anything so I'm going to uh, fix the exhaust I'm going to fix the exhaust which we broke yesterday by going under a low tree and catching it on a branch uh, and what I'm going to do is bend a piece of steel into a tube, slip it inside and just weld it up. So there you go, not a difficult job and I'll crack on with it. Here we are folks, a nice piece of tin formed on a nice piece of pipe, just the right size to slip into there and then we can slip it, I'll put it into the exhaust first and then we'll weld it up. Cracking! Fuck's sake. Well I don't know if I've just recorded myself welding that or not. Uh, but there you go, I've just welded it. Bye now. So I picked this up and I thought that's an ideal piece of metal to make a nice beveled washer for under there. And it was until I started turning it down and realised that it's actually had a piece brazed into it. Right, so what they've done here I would guess is they've cut a slot in it with a horizontal milling cutter and then they've brazed a piece in to make it into a square. So there you go. So I can't use it. Never mind. I'll find another piece. I was just, I'm just tinkering about because there's not a great deal I can do. Uh, I've just taken all these bolts out and, uh, well, I started, I started to turn the ends down in the lathe, but they weren't very happy. So I, uh, I ended up grinding them down. And then I, uh, took this bar out of here, stuck that in the lathe, turned the end off and then welded the uh, welded this, this piece into here just to uh, make it look a lot neater and whoops and what I need now is a nice washer for under there but that unfortunately is an assembly or if you like it's a weldment or even a brazement right I shall continue the thing Here's a thing, nice little hole there, matching that one, but what's it for? Well, it's for the little dipstick. There should be a little dipstick slotted into there with a round ball on the end of it and you fill that with oil, you lift the dipstick out and put some drops of oil in your centre, pop it back in. And if you look very carefully, if I can just show you on the screen without completely I'll bring, Meanwhile, the I'll bring you back and women's double skull. right folks if you look very carefully on there you can see it it's got a little taper on it and a ball on the end and it just slots in there and that's filled with oil and you use it to put a drop of oil on your centre when you're turning dipstick right I shall make one. In Langtoft, two OAPs moan about having no winter fuel payment. Please, Mr. Starmer, can I have some more? So after rain stop play yesterday, if you look back in my videos long, long ago, before COVID, when COVID was just starting, 
we got this far. We got this, not this piece of string up, the piece of string we put up has long rotted away. And uh, this morning we've taken some old elders down and we're try, starting to develop a straightish line to get some fence posts in and some fence panels and I think that's about as near to the to the edge as we can go because this does shelve off steeply as you can see as you can probably see there's our beautiful moss covered trees right we'll crack on it's Friday it's rather warm and very humid and it's like working in the rainforest bye now Unbelievably, in this heat and humidity, we've built a fence. We've built a fence on a hillside, and it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. Last panel, last panel going in, and jobs are good. We just need to put a reinforcer in, and we've done it. It's been very, very hard in this heat, but we've done it. Not bad for a 72 and a 74 year old. Bye now. You said it won't look like that in a year or two. just peeping And here, deep in the rainforest of East Yorkshire, we hear the plaintive cry of the Milwaukee. <laughs> You could call it a mating call because it's to do with screws. Never mind. <laughs> Bye now. There it is, folks. The final panel. There isn't any room to get another one in. We're going to go down from there with post and rail. And uh, it's now Guinness o'clock. Advertising. That's it folks, thank you all for watching, thanks for subscribing, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, it makes a huge difference to the channel. Thanks to the new subscribers, we've had about three or four this week, and uh, that's very pleasing. So if you're watching and you're not subscribed, just click the subscribe button, it doesn't matter if you never come back again, but please do. And I'll see you all next week, bye now. <laughs>